Okay, uh, so um, anatomy of a train. So, and how to creatively uh, reconstruct it in Houdini. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic. First thing first, you all know that um, this tectonics uh, theory that the earth is made out of, um, you know, some tectonics, a handful of techno tectonics, and all the continents were together at some point, and then they started to move. So what, what we're looking at is just like billions of years of um, change, okay? So, so, so when you look at when they were together, they, when they separate, um, some new lands are formed, like New Zealand. Uh, Aotearoa New Zealand is a new, relatively, well, when we say new, means newer, re relatively newer. If you compare it to like Africa or like um, parts of like middle China, uh, middle um, Persia, so they, they are old lands, they're, so they they pretty old. So I will talk about what's the difference between a newly shaped, like newly shaped, which means like not four billion years, but like let's say one billion years. So, um, so the thing that defines the shape of a land is erosion. So um, let me go. So, so first thing first happened to the to the earth was volcanoes. So everywhere were volcano and hot things were, were erupting. Mountains were shaping, um, tectonics were, you know, sliding on top of each other. So when they were hitting each other, the, the mountains were rising up. So, um, so the, f the new young um, structure of the earth crust um, was so sharp and pointy and so, but like through a process of erosion, they got where they are now. So what is erosion? So erosion is everything that starts to shape the land, to, to change the, sh the shape of the land. Uh, first thing first is raining, you know. So, so let's, I'm, I'm going to point at some, at some point, I'm going to talk about a very interesting piece of geological um, land pretty close to us, Rangitoto Island. It's less than, it's a very, very young island. And um, that's why it's so different. And then through, you will see that through a process of simply first thing first, raining. You know, there's a lot of rain every day, every, every year, lots of raining. So raindrops, they start to create streams and, 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 and rivers and floods and they move sediments from top um, of the mountain to the, to the lower areas. So they sl create slums, they move little um, things, they soften the edges, and then the vegetation. So these two work against each other. So raindrops try to wash away the the debris out of the land, but plants to try to keep them. Um, so, so other forces that move the land are rivers. So like, you know, um, we'll, we'll look at some examples that you see that the rivers, they are strong forces of accumulated water that they want to like push things um, and move, build uh, big boulders and rocks. Um, the streams, like when it rains and then after that streams are shaped or floods, which are the massive amount of um, sudden accumulation of water, they move things very fast and very quick. They are uh, shape shifters of the land. See, in a gradual process, washes, washes away um, 
the the sea uh, you know seaside and coastal lines so so water is the main force but apart from that just just the weather like how cold it is um, you know cold weather you know especially in in lands that um, day and night the weather the the temperature changes suddenly so in some places like central um, um, you know US or in Mexico or in, in uh, uh, desert lands in, in um, uh, Africa or in Iran so in the morning it's just like 50 degree Celsius in the night it's minus 10 so that's a massive drop in the um, temperature so rocks this like change in temperature you know explodes the rock so this is this is the thermal process, and then wind. You know, like I'm sure you have seen those fantastic structures that are made out, out of winds uh, or glaciers, like ice. Like ice is seems like static, but they are moving. Um, which I, we just visited um, Fox and also Joseph. Uh, Glacier, what was that, Joseph? Something glacier um, in South Island. It was fantastic, and so it's moving. That that massive piece of um, ice among the mountains, trapped there, and it's moving and it's moving rocks and everything with it. There are other things like mass movements, like the tectonics plates moving, or chemicals. These are uh, elements that um, create erosion. So you will see that. In Houdini, we, we have the same terminology, which is very smart. So, um, as I said, the first thing, um, you know, the first reason of the shapes we see in the crust of the Earth are volcanic and tectonic activities. Um, so, you, you see, like, levels of height, um, so we have sea level, we have seabed, so we have bedrocks, and then it goes, so bedrocks like, you know, the, the core of the mountains, and then we have slumps and sediments traveling through top of the mountain to the river, and so understanding all of that is important. We will discuss that in detail. So as I said again, uh, the, the cycle of the water is the main reason of erosion. So like um, raining takes away all these um, little debris and sands from the mountains, pushes them down to the river. And then so those sharp edges become softer and softer through millions and millions of years. So a train like this um, seems well, it's just it's a beautiful one, but like it's a bit you know it's time for us to start to analyze it. So um, we have mountains that are have been softened. Um, you see that this is kind of like an old land because the mountains on top are not like so rocky and sharp. They have been eroded for millions of years and uh, so but the, the erosion has stopped at some point well has not stopped slowed down because of the plants because they, they try to keep the soil uh, and hold it and not let it move that's why um, the first um, fight against um, you know movement of the deserts uh, is is to to do the plantation so um and then you will see that like oh some of these little um you know the pieces of um sediments and 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 debris and soil has been moving towards the the river and here you can see the terracing effect so some terraces have been shaped because of that like layered movements so we're going to discuss all of that. This is also like, again, uh, 
a older piece of land and you clearly see that raining creates these streams as I said these streams kind of like carve into the soil and find their way out down the the mountain and they shape all these like you know um, scars on the surface of the mountain uh, but we'll see how to create that in Houdini oh this is a like um, um, this looks like this is a uh, this is Colorado this looks like um, like an old land like um, Middle Persia which is like pretty much the same you see like this has this used to be forest we can say but now it has turned into desert um, the reason that we can say that it's an like um, eroded land is that things has been softened a very interesting effect here is that there must have been a, a sharp um, edge here at some point like millions of years ago but things has been eroded until like it has been clipped and flattened on top uh, we will do that in Houdini using the height, height field clipping and you see that the river is eroding and, and all the like you know those like veins on the rock are so every desert gets a lot of rain they are desert but they get a lot of rain at some point and because there's no plantation and vegetation um, the, the, the land is shaped so harshly this is a very nice area um, which like geologically is younger you can see that like uh, the surface of the land is so um, sharp and and um, and it's young and and you see that like um, the the erosion is started to take away and change the the shape of the land glaciers like this one um, which is a Mount Everest a piece of Mount Everest they chisel the edges of and they look they they work like a I don't know what you call like those type of tools that you use to chisel the edge because they're sharp they're heavy and they move as a giant piece together so they easily like kind of break all the rocks and then then, then chisel and and make uh, the edges of the mountains sharp and 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 create those beautiful shapes so let's look at these erosion like you know these um, pattern these kind of phenomena in actual landscapes uh, I'm sure that you all have many of you have played Assassin's Creed or um, you have heard of the Assassin's story um, if you, you might have thought about where the legend is come from it's not a legend there has been assassins living here in this castle uh, it's it's about an hour uh, driving from my parents home so so this castle is located in a fantastic um, geological uh, location which I, I really like um, Alamut um, fortress let's say they they ha they were so smart they have made their fortress here and they've been protected by the mountains and all the like kind of uh, rocky mountains for centuries until um, and they were actual assassins um, very skilled not in that level of the game that you see <laughs> but just like they were sending people to kill um, um, important people of their time so this is an old land that um, you see that like how 
reigning for millions of years have softened the, the hills. The hills are soft. But suddenly sometimes you see such a, such a magnificent piece of rock coming out. Like, uh, so in Manganui, I think we have that lion head up north. So it's just like a piece of rock that looks like a lion head. And everything around it has been eroded again and again until um, some piece, giant piece of bedrock has surfaced. So, and that beautiful, f you know, shapes, it's, you see that it's, it has a direction, so that's a geological direction, but also has been carved because of the wind. So, apart from that, you see like, um, you also see like, you know, the, some, some, when, when the erosion has happened, like around this area, you see slumping has been shaped. It means that the sediments has been moved from top to, the, to these areas. Um, this is, again, northern um, Persia in Mazandaran. You see a, a phenomenon called terracing, um, which we will do that in Houdini um, uh, today. So <clears throat> in, in an old land, because of the volcanic activities, you still can get um, mountains like this. This is Mount Damavand, which is relatively, geologically, a young mountain because it's a vol volcano. It's, again, like, it's one of the most, my favorite spots. Um, but like an old land, like this is, um, I think it's Tajik Dasht. Or here, you can see that, like, actually, this is this is a very nice, and if you want to like see a very original uh, landscape, you can see like how everything has been aged so much that the top of the the mountains has been clipped. There's a lot of like. Uh, soil has been washed down and all these things has been shaped. Uh, wind has played an important role in like shaping like um, the edges. Um, the, the land has been flattened because it's been filled with all these like um, soil that has been traveled through through millions of years of um, erosion. We want to replicate those millions of years of erosion in Houdini. So these are the things that we have tools for it. But the art is when you would be able to create such a thing. This is a cave in, in Lebanon. Um, so this, is, this kind of like shapes are made mostly out of chemical reactions um, within the cave. Uh, this is the f one of my f favorite spots in my bucket list. I've not visited yet uh, in China. Um, you ha you see that like again like I can call like geologically China is an old land. So you can see that like how why this this land is so unique and interesting because this is the battle between. Um, life and uh, all the forces of the nature forces of the nature like raining and you know look at the the these rocks they are on the verge of exploding and and falling apart but these plants are holding the whole pieces together so uh, why why so much rocks have been left upright I can say that there's a lot of harsh raining right down so we will talk about the the the, the angle of the raining in Houdini and how to create um, that so here you see again you see that the, all these like mountains have been eroded um, the, the, the debris have been traveled through 
the rivers to the um, and, and then then they they shaped all these. Actually, the fertile land land is the reminiscence of erosion. Actually, uh, fantastic place again in China. I'm sure that you might have heard of this amazing spot. So um, the the different chemicals create different shapes um, and colors. Um, we will discuss how we can replicate that. Um, this is a national park in South Korea, which is, um, I like it very much from the images not visited yet. Um, and the reason is, uh, you see that like how changing the, in the weather is exploding the rocks. And soon these rocks will explode in, you know, um, smaller details, they will get, um, eroded down to the to the rest. Um, Mount Auraki, not Mount Cook, that's the right name, Auraki. So Mount Auraki, so I, I started from old lands to, hi Betty, to uh, younger ones. Um, so you can say that edges are much sharper here. So they are, so if this one has been in the process of, I don't know, let's say, four billion years of erosion, you can say that this one has not been in less than a billion years. I'm just throwing numbers. You don't take that as scientific numbers. Um, but we know, we can say that relatively, um, this mountain range is much younger. And the, the glacier on top, all these, um, snow, they are chiseling those edges down. The beauty of New Zealand and my favorite spot, uh, which is Queenstown and the Milford Sound, is that because it's a relatively young, uh, geologically young land, things are flat, but suddenly you see like eruption of volcanic eruption has created uh, these magnificent pieces that are in, they are in the process of eroding using like, you know, by these streams on, and, and rivers. Um, so you see that like these like monstrous mountains, um, you know, if you've not been there, this is, again, like, this is a, one of the points of being in New Zealand, just go and visit uh, Milford Sound. It's like Lord of the Rings level of um, natural uh, landscape. So this, this fountain is 150 meters. It's just three times the, the size of Niagara. Um, so you see that, like, a sudden eruption has raised these uh, kind of constructions, and these constructions are in the process of erosion using, if you remember, a hydro, which is the water changing in the weather, weather which you can see it on top, which is like uh, rocks exploding because of the cold and, you know, hot and cold weather. Plantation vegetations try to stop that. So, like, all this phenomena is uh, observable here. And when all that forces of nature get hand in hand, you get fantastic beauties of Iceland. So, um, you see here, like, like, for example, here, you see how strong forces of nature, nature has clipped and flattened the top of, so there's, there's has been harsh winds and rivers and everything, they flattened the top of the mountains, they have taken a lot of uh, sand and soil, you can see that the sand and soil has been piled up here, and then uh, on top of that pile, you know, fertile land, you know, pl uh, you know all these uh, vegetations has grown. And you can see how nicely here water and I can say a lot of wind has carved this beautiful, magnificent 
uh, distortion in the land. So keep that word, distortion, uh, because so far we have been discussing about like uh, vertical um, changes, but sometimes you get this change within the horizontal, you know, uh, levels. And um, look at this one, like how nicely things has been slumped and piled up here. And sometimes you get this alien type of natural looking landscape because the forces of nature is, are so, this is basalt coastline in Iceland. Uh, forces of nature are so harsh but might put you in a trouble when you want to leave there but they create such a fantastic landscapes that worth traveling there so here you can see like so you know that uh, Iceland is an active um, so there's a lot of it's geologically active there's a lot of volcanic uh, activities happening there so it's pretty much at some places like here is like our uh, Brangitoto Island where you see that look at the soil there it's black and it's sharp and it's new it's like recently um, erupted you know that age of an island like Brangitoto Island in the geological um, timeline is like nothing it's just like a, a, a newly born piece of land for us evanescent creatures this is uh, anyway this is a considerable amount of time uh, how is the what is the pipeline in Houdini to get a train done so let's open Houdini and when you press tab on the train you see a height field but actually you can create a height field and inside height field if you press tab inside train you see everything starts with the height field okay Look at this height field. When I rotate around, it's all land. Okay? When I press spacebar F, wow. It's, it's a massive piece of uh, land. I can say it's thousand by thousand. It means thousand by thousand meters. It's a, it's a, a square kilometer piece of land. And you will see this is magical how Houdini can create lots of train, lots of details within this land. So what is a height field? A height field is a 2D image. What you will see here in 3D is actually 2D. But Houdini is constantly giving you a 3D simulation of that. Height field, you know, a, a, a dot, a pixel here has a value let's say uh, it has a color it has a it has a x and y sorry it's a position but height fill it has x and y and height so that height gets simulated in Houdini constantly to create that for you let me go back to my slides so like we start to massing so so don't be panicked by these shapes um, these pipeline here it's very simple it has two parts blocking refining or detailing so blocking detailing okay so you do the blocking here and then you upscale and then you do the, add the detailing it's like sculpting in ZBrush it's like modeling in, in ZBrush you put uh, you know basic objects on top of each other and then um, you um, you do the blocking and then you upscale like in dynamic or things like that and then you start um, adding details so detailing so we go through, through the same process because you cannot create a very detailed um, landscape right away out of the box because that that might not be so creative because you want the creative control you want to create what you want 
So th this is the, the important part. So, you know, we have reviewed all these beautiful landscapes, but the point is, and in your projects, in your specific projects, you want to create a piece of landscape that nobody has ever seen. It has to look natural and kind of like realistic, but at the same time, some, so you won't be able to find it anywhere else in the world because you want to say, oh, that's the beauty of like the, the creative visual effects because you just create that uh, piece of landscape. So let's start with um, this part, which is the blocking. So the blocking starts with massing the model, seeding, lobbing, and then remapping, and continuing this again and again and again until you get what you want. Okay? So what is massing a model? Massing is blocking out the larger scale structure out of the train. Okay? You can use multiple um, things. First thing first is easy. Um, guys, um, from now on, whenever you just press tab and press HF, height field, um, so you don't need type height field, just type HF, and then after that, type the thing that you want. So I want to paint. So here you see that the process of massing, one of them is painting. Okay? So just type HFP, which is, you, you just suddenly see um, height field paint or patch or pattern or project. So these, so we use paint and project. So we start with paint. Simple self-explanatory, it means that it paints, okay? So when I press enter, it gives me a brush. When I hold shift up and down, I can um, paint with this brush on the surface. Uh, let me talk about my own procedure. I start with not painting, but with projection. How? So let me go back out of go back out of height field, hide it, and add a add a box here. Let's work in that box. You know that that box is tiny little down there. So because height field was in this in the mag, you know, it's a, it's a, it's in kilometer scale. So I press spacebar F to zoom into that my box, get inside. So I want to create a mountain range, like a magical, I don't know, gateway to hell mountain range, something like that. But I want to block it with like some sort of, you know, strange things. So first thing first, um, you know how to start um, the center it's easy to say that copy um, this parameter for the center paste it here paste uh, relative um, and then divide it by two so from now on every time that I scale this up or down this uh, stays there. Easy peasy. Um, so let's start, do a bunch of things. So let's say I click on this select, I select the top uh, face, I start to um, go to the polygons. So I I am randomly creating things. So you can, you can, you can do create your own. So this is the point. So when you look at uh, a landscape like, like this, okay? So you say that, okay, I see a bunch of cones, a bunch of boxes, and a bunch of, I don't know, like, again, conal shapes, and then there's a flat. It's, you know, try to imagine your desired landscape in terms of boxes and spheres and cones and, and, and make it, okay? So, I create, so I start just like putting uh, some, um, maybe, so 
some extrusion, simple extrusion. Actually, I would have liked that uh, the that parts would have been larger. Anyway, I might take that one. Oh yeah, that that's that's better. Uh, okay, so let's say I have like a bunch of these pile up in a I don't know a spiral way. So let me create a grid here. Um, I press tab, type grid. Uh, these I uh, just want to pile them up like in a in a long you know larger area. So this grid I make I middle click on the size and make it larger. Maybe yeah, that's a that's a good size for me. And. It's, it would be a simple grid like two by two. So you see, you don't see anything in it. But on that grid, when selected, just click on the view of it and then go to the, um, go to the create and draw a curve on it. So I just wanna like create a spiral curve. This is a magical land with all sort of things. So curve is created here. So now I can say that um, copy to points. So this, this, this curve has a bunch of points and I have an object here, okay? I just want to scatter this object on those bunch of points. Tab, copy to points, copy to points in the middle. This is my object. These are my points. You see lots and lots of points. But I don't want that much. I want just a little. Because the reason, the reason that it's too much, because if you, point, turn, um, if you go to the curve here, and if you turn that dot, you see that, oh, you've got plenty of points here. So it's good to resample your curve. Re Resample your curve, attach it in the middle, and you see that with this, uh, I just have to go to here. So you see that like the number of the, uh, the dots gets smaller and smaller. So actually I can turn the visibility of copy to points on and resample based on that. Like a mountain range like this, um, is not bad, it's nice for me. Maybe a little bit more. Um, they are two, I just wanna turn off the point display points. They are two mechanical and order now. So I might add a, go to the deform and add maybe a taper. So if you don't see it like right away here, um, and if I pr you press enter and you don't see it again, just easy, easy peasy, hold that part, and then uh, just to confirm, stupid, like to call Billy stupid Siri, I'm teaching. So press tab and type taper, Linear taper, add it here, go to the setting, okay. Actually, I want to add a bit of details here before um, tapering. So I just create a maybe subdivide in the middle. I 
don't want them to be so soft. I want them to be okay. Crease value. I want the so I want them to be creased in a sharp, um, but like more detailed as well. You will see that like all these like will go away when we're gonna uh, create what we want. Uh, because they're going to be projected into the um, landscape. So I go to the linear tapering. Uh, it's good that you start with, um, ooh, not here. If you're good, uh, that you start with this, ca so the capture direction and everything. So start with like something like a tapering, and you see, oh, it's, it, the direction is from Z direction. And it's quite visible. Why? Because the capture direction is on Z. I make it on Y, okay, um, and the capture length, I just want to make it the whole part to be captured, the whole length of it to be captured. So you see that now all of that is captured. Maybe you just go high, higher up as well. So I want them to be tapered inward, you know, it's much cooler now, isn't it? What if I do the length scale here and I scale them up? Paper inward more, but make them more exciting by twisting. Ooh, that is super cool. Okay, that's a super cool uh, structure. What about bending? Should I bend? Oh, yeah, why not? Because I, I would like to bend it towards maybe around the Z axis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So imagine that, like, I have a mountain range that reaches, like, just, just think of, like, that mountains arrive here and these, these kind of magical structures would be in the middle. That would be super cool, isn't it? So let me save my pro oh by the way, I am fired because I have not set my project. So I have to create a new project. Uh, I save it in desktop for the moment. I call it magical train and Inside there, this is my project structure. Uh, this is train, and then I create it, and then I press. Um, okay, before that, I have to make sure that the project is set. So I go to the edit, to the alias and variables, and inside variables, I make sure that the heap file and the job is set to that address. The job is set, but the hip file not. So I save the hip file there as well. And okay. Maybe hip as well. All of that in the same project folder. We are safe now. Control S. Why it gets me there again? So I just want to make sure that there's nothing. OK. It should. OK, so this is this is how. You press Ctrl S. And if you press on job, it has to direct you to the project folder, which for me did. It's here. It's there. So here I call train version 1. Let's call it Magical Train version 1. Accept. OK, so um, the project is saved. The project is set and saved. So let's, OK, instead of, let's, let's work nice and neat. OK, let's call this um, blocking geo. And let's call this. Um, Train 
someone tells me if it's train or train, how should I distinguish the spelling from train? Is it the same? Train and train? Terrain. And that one is train? Terrain. Okay. That's thanks, Jason. Okay, so let's go get inside blocking GO and then uh, you know that for the sake of um, Oh, we've got that nice um, manual things that you can use for shaping it. Um, at the end of it, I add a null. You know that always we keep things tidy, add a null. And uh, for a shape of, um, uh, you guys know that I usually click here, close all this area open it for my nodes and every time that I need attributes I press or parameters let's say I press P P stands for parameters so I like this one if you press Z on your keyboard you get a bunch of shapes so I like the output nodes to look like a portal so I press Z and make that round this is just like cosmetics you know this is just fancy works no no and I like to always keep the outputs grayish. This is me. So I press C for the color and make it grayish. So, and I press spacebar. You will know what that spacebar is important. And type out. Out blocking geo. OK. So I'm nice and neat. Save it inside train. Um, I just before start painting, as I said, I usually project and then paint. You see that that's tiny, isn't it? So first thing first, uh, let me delete that uh, paint first. First thing first, you have to object merge it. Bring it in. Don't be fooled by seeing it. If you are in a node level and here you say that just hide other objects, you see that your blocking geometry is not imported into this so train is a sub-level um, op operation. Do you know sub-level? It's surface operators. So here, um, actually, I just want to turn that on and turn this off. So here, uh, just add an, so any, any, op any sub-level operators work here. So object merge here. So go and press P and find it. Now you know the, the value of that spacebar. Oh, alt, it just brings it on top. So select it. It's imported here. It's tiny. Um, I, I select this. Or maybe I just want to um, template this. So when, I, when you are working on that one, you will see the, the area, that, that highlighted area. Okay, so add a translate node, tab, trans, transform, make it larger, P, uh, okay. Actually, I want it to be massive. It's the center of my world, okay. So now I want to project it. So I go and bring my height field, uh, untemplate it, drag from the output, tab, HF, P. Height field, project. And this is my height field. This is my projection object, and it's projected into that now. Uh, it's very rough and it's very organized, uh, so that's why I add some noise or distortion. So, okay. So before distortion or noise, um, I am talking about. So far, I was saying that why we are here. F five. Okay. So we are massing the model, are we? I said that it happens with HF Heightfield project or paint. Let's do the painting as well. So 
So let's say you want this in the middle. Actually, I want it to be taller. And then you want this not to be like that. So some mountain ranges reach. This is so unnatural. So I add a tab HFP, height fill paint, and then I paint the area. I press enter, hold shift, change the size as I want. And I paint the area that I want the mountain to reach there. Maybe, maybe there's a road to here, like this road is um, in the middle here. Around the road are these kind of ranges. Nice. Isn't that beautiful? We don't know yet because we have to add. So this is a, this is the the mostly used node here, HF noise, simple. So you add a noise. This one adds a noise to everywhere so far. So you can say, okay, add a noise, but you want this noise to be applied just to your mask. You see that this node has two inputs. One of them is the GO or the height field, the previous height field. One of them is the mask. I can say that this paint has a mask. Grab that mask. Now you can see that it had generated um, kind of those disturbances only to those painted areas. This is a good guide for me, guys. Um, I can go back to the paint and I can start. Um, actually, I just want to lower down the element size so it would be nice and refined and then not so but let's go harsh let's let's go let's um, treat it like like earth you know let's start with like kind of harsh volcanic activities sharp mountains and then and then erode it for millions of years in few frames within within it so so i go harsh and I grab, go back to paint, and I paint it. Paint the area that I want to uh, want, want more more of it. So actually, here I. Why the paint doesn't work for me? Oh, there we are. Okay. Okay, painting. I don't want these areas to be so. And the middle of it, you see, like the middle of it, I, I just paint but with like very sh soft touches of brush. I wish I had my tablet here. It's not with me. I'm using mouse, so excuse my drawing. So the middle is nice as well. Sometimes you just want like to just create some disturbances here and there. Some mountain range here, maybe, or just valleys. Anyway. Okay, so we did use uh, paint and project. Uh, I'm going to talk about something super cool here, which is using satellite data, elevation map for satellite data. I worked on a project for a TV commercial that I was using um, GIS or geologic information system like satellite data for creating trains to make exact uh, so let, let's say let's say let's click on that um, that I provided link here for you the satellite data I looked at so there's a bunch of satellite data out there um, I think the the one of the easiest one to use is are these ones which is a Japanese uh, satellite that has collected a lot of elevation map from all around the earth 
So you have to register here. I already did. Uh, so if you click on this link, it asks you for the login. So my uni email. Oh, I should find my password. Hang on, they emailed me the password. Okay, um, let's go to New Zealand. Let's go where do you think? Uh, wait for sound. Maybe that area. So it's a five by five. The size is three thousand six hundred meters by. So it's about three and a half kilometers by three and a half kilometers. So if you download that information, so there's a trick. This is a tricky information because the, the type of data here is very different than what you expect. You expect to see a black and white photo that shows you like elevation map. So the bright area becomes uh, like mountainous, the, the dark area becomes like sea level. Um, but there's a trick in it and also the point is Close that one. So, okay, download it. Um, so I'm gonna. So when you open it, um, you get this elevation map. This first one, DSM. Okay, when when I open it, just like absolute black with a bunch of. So there's like kind of some noise in it as well that you have to clean it in Photoshop. Um, so you have to find the remap uh, values for that. So here um, there's a guide for this specific satellite data, the remap data. So what is remapping? You will see me using it again and again. So actually, let me share this for everyone. So I copy this in K-Drive um, in teaching. So if you go to the K-Drive in resources, I make a satellite data. If, if I have spelled satellite properly, I don't know. So you can use what I'm using now as well. <coughs> So what you have to use is just copy that address. Let's go up and create another height field. And so I'm going to hide this one. HF, enter, get inside. Here, instead of height field, just use HF file, which is read a file. Press P, go to that address, and load that height fill uh, DSM. So it is loaded, um, takes time, but you don't see anything. Um, the reason is that you have to, as explained here, where, where is that? You have to do a remapping, okay? So make sure that height field is by axis, which is by axis. The grid size should be the here. Um, the the data here says. I think at some point says that the the size of the piece of land that has been blocked with that in that block is 3,600 by 
3,600, so it's a massive, actually, um, not here, um, grid samples, 3,006, <laughs> size yeah we just have to change the size 3600 that's it and then we have to uh, change the um, do a remapping so size 3600 then add a remap height field remap Everything is height filled here. So from minus one to one, and from minus 32,000 32, to plus 32,000. Now you can see that, oh, Milford sound is, is there. There's a lot of noises, as I said, but these noises can be cleaned either in Houdini procedurally or before importing the map. So it's, you see that actually it's, I would go and scale it up somehow, not in the values, but maybe, um, height scale. Um, this is the right natural way, but sometimes you just want to exaggerate. Ooh, not that much. Maybe 2.5 or 2. Two times. Okay, so this looks like, if you look at it properly, it, this looks like meals for sound, that part that you just go with the sheep in the middle and enjoy the, those landscapes. Uh, so it's accurate um, in terms of satellite data. Uh, so that's another way. So it's like, again, like it's not, sometimes you do that. I did it in a project. Just so I, that's why I didn't phase it out mm -hmm. as an option for you. So I, I just delete that for the moment. Okay, let's go back where we were. We were here, okay, we did our massing. Let's go to seeding. So seeding is, um, you know guys, um, just think of this as a piece of land. Oh, sorry. I press space. Think of this as a piece of land. If rain comes, uh, here is so soft and the rain will pass by without creating nice textures on it, nice grooves on it. So you need like some details. So again, first thing first, so you, in, in seeding, you just use noise, um, which we did, as I said, it's um, mostly used, and then distort. Distort by noise is um, is pretty obvious, but distort by layer is a very interesting thing um, I'm going to talk about. So let's say I'm going to, um, first thing first, I want to get rid of that uh, red. So I type height field clear. I press HFC. So I go find that mask clear. So clear the mask, and then you can add a noise, you know, why not? Hide fill noise. Uh, you know, guys, noises have different patterns. So I don't like this very sharp noise here. I might go for a, I don't know, other type of noises, like a flow but very subtle, very, so this is zero, just, 
just subtle. So you see that some part of it gets some noise. Why not? Uh, with a very low element sizes, I just want to make that even lower, 10. OK, just make it a bit noisy. That's it. But what is interesting is that you can create a height field here, HF. You can um, you know, add a noise to this, HF N, like a very weird noise, like, I don't know, maybe Manhattan F1 noise on that one, or Manhattan F2. Yeah, this is super weird. But you will see that even this will be a very interesting thing to play with because this will chunk out my my train into interesting pieces. Actually, I want to bring it up. Anyway, let's keep it that way. And then here I would say HFD, which means distort, and I distort it by noise, and that noise comes from here. Uh, or layer, layer. At this time, I wanna do HF distort by layer. Um, guys, think of. Think of um, height field as like a Photoshop layers. They are actually 2D images. So they interact like they layer on top of each other. Yep, that's the right one. So you don't see anything interesting yet. So if I go zero, uh, you, can, you can see like, oh, things are just happening now. Maybe I go high up. Oh, uh, yeah, you see like. But what is important for me is that my mountains, oh yeah, they are touched. But this is so harsh. So I uh, maybe I you do some some twisting as well. If you do from top. Let me turn this note off you so you see. So I press B without after without after so this is you remember that i discussed that some some displacements in the land are vertical okay so we did some seeding okay just like basically adding a bit of um, complexity lobing so this is just a fancy name for the first iteration of erosion okay we just want to erode the land for the first time. So if you just add HFE, like which is erosion. So th this is the magic, you know, this is the magical part of all these train parts. So go to the visibility of it. It gives you a visualization which is not accurate. So that's why you have to constantly go to the visualization and say compute range. So it does the compute, it computes the range for you. I might say that, so this is just visualization, don't take it serious, but you can make it fun. I can say that I have a bit of snow on top, but here would be just kind of like a mountain rocky thingy, kind of like dark rocks. Um, I just want more snow and more, I add one here, how can I add it, double click, yeah, double click that one, I just want it to be uh, like that rock again. So I have a wide range of rocky things. And then plants or just vegetation begins. I like dark vegetation there. 
and here as well even darker there uh, lots of soil down here so not so much more soil yeah this is a bit more fascinating but it's more interesting not fascinating interesting for me I would go and say okay so let me do the erosion without so here you see that I am saying use very harsh and aggressive eroding before doing that let me just play press play that's it uh, play so you see that suddenly yay, millions of years of erosions begin frame by frame Okay, I so while it's working, I just want to point at things for you. First thing first, what we see here is the erosion with hydro or thermal. The same concept that we just discussed. So we have hydro, which is wa uh, water streams and rivers and things like that. We have thermal. We have even, I'm gonna, I press escape, I just go back. So you see that here, like erosion starts, like years and years are passing by. So uh, it's not harsh yet, it's very subtle. That's why you see all these like kind of nice and subtle streams, but it doesn't erode things like the way that like millions of years do. Uh, but the interesting thing is that you see like every concept that we've been discussing like hydro erosion thermal erosion you see precipitation like the amount of rain so here so let, let's do that let's go back to the beginning we're going to make it harsh so we go to the advanced we go to the erodibility what, an, what a word there and say here it says that don't erode anything right away just like you know have some so they say so take some time so till erosion happens but I say no start eroding everything very harsh and ramp up no not gradually but just right away uh, initial factor should it erode right away or just take some step by step and then gradually start to erode it says half half but I just say no just start uh, eroding slope factor so just imagine that you say that let me go to one of those slides let me go to one of my favorite ones like this here I can say here in a in a in a in some time at history Raining was like whoosh, you know, suddenly massive amount of rain just carved down all these things. So that is here, slope factor. Should it be subtle and just like gradually, slowly, or just like whoosh from top? So I just lower it down, say, hoy, just like erode it harshly for me. Okay, so that. These are some harsh values. I start. Why it still have? Um, I should change something, or maybe I do it here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that there's there's no cache. For some reason, it was cached and not deleted after I changed the okay start this is a much harsher erosion but you will see everything that we discussed so far so what happens here do you see that it's raining harsh and it's taking away from top all the debris and soil and bring them and piling them in the mountain uh, feet uh, and slump them 
So the water is chiseling. So like whatever is um, there's details. The water just kind of carve the way around and and finds its way around it. Okay, so you can see that those very harsh, sharp corners here, they don't get eroded because the water cannot suddenly um, um, kind of, the water slips away actually. I can stop here. If you're happy, I'm happy. It's from the very basic um, steps. And then you can say that freeze frame. So frame freezes. Uh, so if I go back to the beginning, it stays there. It, but n now we need to do some, some adjustment ourselves. Why not? Uh, first thing first, um, you remember that, OK. So I'm going to go look at, show you the slides. So we, we, do the, we did the lobbing. So we're going to remap back on. But before remapping, let me just do a bit of shaping. Excuse me, I should not do that here because of the education, but I'll, I cannot resist myself to add a HF clip. Of, because I, want to, I, I really want to clip off that tip of the mountains so you see that those tips didn't erode? I do it. Yeah, this is much more natural. I've got my magical mountain ranges, yet they look naturally now. OK, cool. So you can ignore that part, which is a shaping part. But I'm glad. So it's time to remap here, that one which means to like, hey, s you know, kind of s squash things down. And then, because a, a land, an actual land is created layer by layer. The weathering and all this erosion washes it away and softens things. But suddenly, like, a volcano erupts. Fresh rocks come out. Again, it washes away, and then volcano comes. So, it layer by layer it creates, it gets created. That's where you use HF remapping, and you here you say that press P, do a bit of compute range. You keep using this compute range. It's a very cool thing. I like it very much because. It just suddenly give, tells you, OK, this is the, your, low, your deepest area. This is your highest area. What do you want to do with it? So I say that that's the input. I just want to crunch. So middle click here, go to that values, and start to lower down the whole thing. No, I don't want it to be too much. I um, kind of work with the valleys too. Because the valleys get filled as well. OK. OK, so. What's the process? I, I do it once, but for your own thing. So let me delete these, um, those red parts. It just annoys me. So I just HF clean mask, clear mask, so we don't see them. So uh, the process is that you have to keep doing this again and again and again until you build up what you really want. 
uh, bear in mind, we have not started detailing. There's no detail here. It's all rough yet. So, OK, I would start. Why not? Why not some magical statue is um, kind of guarding these mountain range. Uh, let me bring some statues. So you remember that I have some data stored in the CG models, 3D scan. So this website is fantastic, guys. It's called um, 3D scan. It, there's a lot of free uh, oop. advanced there's a lot of free uh, 3d scans of amazing sculptures they are free you can download and use them so let me um, I've got some of them here some of them here let me grab one of these. Um, I just file, press P, use that address. It's not an image or geometry sequence. Let's grab this second one. I think this is the Indian one. This is a fantastic Indian sculpture which I add a transform node. Actually, I think to be more accurate, it's Cambodian, not Indian. Where it is? Where are you? Oh. It's here. I... I'm going to why it doesn't show that to me easily. I have to be able to see if does that does anyway I project it now easy and peasy hfp project this that's my sculpture just enter bring it out rotate it land it there somehow that's too big Okay, more, get inside, more, get inside, okay, nice and neat, you see that, that um, Indian goddess is guarding this mountain range, um, what about a bit of painting, HFP, not all P, paint on top of them hold shift S I want to make some of them larger so like like this one in the middle so let's decide first what we want to do with this paint because let's say HF noise or distort by no, no or noise. Let's add just noise and then come here and then say that this noise is going to be like a negative something, negative, yeah, something like that. So that's a nice noise that I am looking for. Yay, cool. So uh, that's a bit harsh. Then, okay, so I've got my paint here, and I paint where I want this noise to function. 
It generates new things for me, new mountains for me, ranges. Oh, yeah. You said that I s think like we need some roads that just like, so why not some mountain ranges? Oh, this is a valley. How can I make it not valid, but a replace instead of replace I'm gonna add to it still creates value for me um, opacity minus one doesn't do anything for me mm, maximum I want a mountain not a valley Paint method. Oh, height. No, I want to do mask, not height. Maximum sharpen at multiply. Doesn't do anything for me at. Anyway. I don't know how, but like at some point it just generates mountain range, like here, over there it generates uh, it generates some valley foreground, background background value is 0, so why not say background value is 1 still creates value for me not anyway so the point is you can carry on and create some areas of interest more changes here and there okay make it a little bit more fascinating so that's called uh then you go through this process until you're happy okay so let's say we're happy we have our sculpture added there as well which is nice it has that split of it i don't like this area so i might paint that out yeah okay uh I don't like that top part and here and here okay cool so this is okay so you're happy this is the time for upscaling so it's height fill resample so you remember that height fill is like volumes you know voxels if you if you have worked with volumes in Houdini you know what they are so the denser the, the more accurate you get but we don't want to go so dense that it stops our computer and explodes our CPU uh, we just go like three times denser for now so you see let, let me let, let's have a, have a look at here one three so you see that things become finer okay so uh, we, we're doing remapping we did remapping we are doing upsampling so again blocking detailing we did the blocking did we so we are doing the upsampling now so upsampling just happened what we should do now start shaping so shaping is two things terracing and clip these are like my favorite things um, let me clear clear all the um, uh, first thing first let me save it and then let me clear all the um, masks height fill clear mask so we don't see any mask here. Um, 
I would like to see some terraces. I would like to see some clipping on the head. So HF clipping on top of the, the, the mountains, not too much. Just a little for those top ones. Make it soft clipping. Okay. This is the beautiful part. Terracing. I like terracing. Uh, there is an amazing place on Earth that everyone should visit. It's in Turkey. It's called Pamukkale. It's fantastic. You see the magic of terracing there. Just go there. And it's salty water and all these terracing are naturally occurred because of eruption and volcanic activities. It's just brilliant, magnificent. So I add HF terracing. So it adds terracing to everywhere or like kind of um, to this height you see you see that between so you can say that between this height and this height the terracing happens okay but that's not what I desire I want to direct it so first thing first you might say okay I know what to do I add an HF paint in the middle and I say that okay grab that mask from here so there's nothing here but wherever I paint let's say here the terracing happens okay isn't that beautiful okay more here maybe at the edge of the here as well And uh, it has some, some attributes like um, kind of uh, step size, you can have like t finer steps, you can fade them slowly so don't would be so harsh, their height, um, soft edges, you know, you can do whatever you want and get like a beautiful terracing effect happening there uh, I want to show you so that was painting I want to show you another feature that is very commonly used and I'm sure you will use it quite a lot and that's I delete this paint and I add a note called um, height field mask by feature that one and that mask is fed into here okay so mask by feature actually let me click on that so you see that so you can say that mask by slope so wherever is uh, kind of like this angle of slope you know would be selected or mask by height whatever fills so I use this a lot because you know that vegetation is very related to the height so some some plants just grow on like between 100 to 200 I don't know if you have gone to pick uh, herbs with your grandma if you're Chinese or Persian you definitely have done that um, it's one of the most beautiful things in the world uh, you, they know at what level what type of herbs grow on the mountain range so or if you look at the, the um, fantastic landscapes in Philippines um, the vegetation of oh, not art but just landscape you can see that about yeah they are just so amazing so there's a lot of terracing there's a lot of plantation by humans in different levels different um, 
different areas, different trees has grown up. Uh, so like, so, to, to, so look at here, like you might say that at that angle, at that height. So how to take control of that here? So you can say that between like this height that and that height, I just want to do that. Or, or like peaks and valleys. So let's say, you just want to say that, okay, so all the peaks or all the valleys, this is actually just valleys, let me go and, or, uh, or direction. So like this slope is very used. Um, maybe terracing happens wherever, not over there on top. But these areas get a bit of terracing. Okay. Now you see that those areas get a nice amount of terracing. And, and it adds to our quality of the, our, our work. So we did, what we did, we did shaping. It's time to reseed, which means like, why not add some more noise and distortion? I don't do that now, but I just go to the final erosion, which is, I just add, because I am gonna cover, so I just erode it, but this time not harsh, but I leave it as a proper erosion. I just go with the default value, I compute range, I adjust it the way I like. I, I, I'm going to delete that. Uh, this is the mask color left by. Copy this here, paste it here. So I don't want the mask color. OK. So mount, tip of mount is. Uh, to be honest, this mountain doesn't get any snow. It's not so mountainous. It's very, it's like a tropical Cambodian kind of landscape. So I've got my, where's my Buddha? She is. Oh, there it is, but just very uh, hidden because of the terracing and aging. Um, I'm going to add some dark green on top. I'm going to delete this, drag and drop, delete this. Uh, some other type of vegetation, maybe... even darker there and then I get soil and the, yeah, I think that's that's what I want maybe I don't know okay so let it rain let it rain for a while like some millions of years so it will take time because it has high res resolution You see that like, uh, you know, the, the rain is slumping a lot of dust and dirt here in these areas, which is very interesting. There's a lot of moss uh, and, sh uh, you know, like kind of sh shaped on or like kind of formed on these uh, rocky mountains, like s hard rocks. That's what I was looking for, just kind of those kind of ancient looking range of mountains. Uh, our Buddha is here. We can feel it, but it's part of the landscape. That's beautiful, part what I wanted. Rain is um, coming and is um, sh forming our land. And it's filling the, 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 these ponds and, and lakes. Okay, the standard timing is like something around 30 frames, 35, but I stop here. Um, 
so I think uh, that's enough for now okay 10 frames is enough So I say that freeze. So again, imagine that I have let it run for 30 frames to get a proper erosion. Sometimes I add a, when you freeze it, it takes some time. OK, so it's frozen at frame 10. The reason it was taking so long because it was freeze at frame 20 for some reason. I don't know why. but. Um, it's frozen now okay so what comes next so let's assume that I'm not 100% happy with this but I'm very happy you see that I can see like some hidden so sometimes I as I said I add a camera so where's my light and camera uh, yeah I add a camera to the scene I look through my camera and I lock here I make sure my camera is a very wide angle camera like a 18 mil camera and then through that camera I travel to my land through my land and see the feeling of it where was that yeah so let's travel through our Buddha yeah so let's say I I travel through like I just go and travel fly over the land I generated and analyze that to get the feeling of it so yeah just let me unlock it go back to my perspective get inside train uh, time to do the shading so there's a quick shading here so it's HF quick shading I don't do too much of shading I just show you okay so imagine that so if you go there everything gets like white but you get like a basic ambient shader and a base texture so you can just go and grab a texture or a color to everywhere let's say dark um, green or brown or whatever and then on top of that you can say that okay you can select your bedrocks and assign a texture from uh, you can find amazing textures with high details on websites like polygon which dub with double i and then build up those textures here and use them or even shaders so you see that it looks at your project folder for the textures or you can just add this your texture so bedrocks are here so, so all the parts of your train has been selected, has been separated. So like bedrocks or tip of your, um, you know, mountains where the, where the snow can, can accumulate, cliffs. Sediments, see? So I can have like a yellow or of this color for the sediments so just imagine instead of that color you use a proper texturing for that um, so let me just select my debris and make them so here are the debris or can be used for snow you know just imagine that snow has fallen and this is the snow area but let's make it debris. So debris are for me they are dark. 
brownish. So where's my water? Um, there's water here, which is okay, clearly blue. So you can do some quick shading here. I uh, just uh, did a table shading. Uh, I would like to water debris. Anyway, I you can add some other textures on top, do the tiling, anything you want. So, but it's still it's a good it's a quick shading that can lead you to it gives you. So if you are middle click here, it gives you all these like kind of information that you can use for proper material making. So what is very used is scattering. Height fill scatter. So um, you see that it scatters everything everywhere. I just want to turn off the grid for now. So let me do turn off the press B on that bypass the quick shade or not. So you see that like scattering scatters a lot of like uh, these little cards everywhere. So do you remember that masking that was very commonly used? Uh, the height field mask by feature. That one, I use it here because I want to select all areas that I want the tree to grow. So I go, let's say the tree will grow in these areas. Let's, so that, that, that's my mask here. So you see that like the, now the scattering just happened those areas. And just imagine that you have a tree, let's make it stupid tree. with a tube and space bar F scale it down and a cone or what are the basic shapes? I just want a cone. Anyway, I get a box. And not here. Here. Box and I and I group that area and transform just that area to give me a thing and I merge these two so I get a stupid tree here Another transform, move it up, scale up, and this one is gonna add a color to it. You know that this is a temporary color. It's not a, it's not a texture or shader. It's just the scene color within your scene. And a color to that one as well here. 
a green color. So anyway, so that's my tree, and I just go back to my train, my massive train, spacebar F here. Uh, those areas has the scatter has happened but what should scatter the first one is the your height field the second one your mask the third one is your objects so now you can see that tree is everywhere why it's been separated I think I should have you know properly managed them anyway so you can make trees and bring them like scatter them around bushes there's a scattering method called hierarchical scattering which you just kind of merge oh that's why so if you merge you, you just merge things one after another you start uh, please read it on on the documentation of the houdini so you start with the larger objects then you go to the finer objects so like l start with the trees and then let's say um, big rocks, small rocks, twigs, everything. So you can you can start to scatter things. So you can achieve a a very nicely done um, kind of landscape in a short, relatively short amount of time. If you first understand the structure of a landscape, so we did the final erosion, we did a simple shading, we did scattering. Let me go to the beginning. So if you understand the anatomy of a of a erosion on a on a landscape, you will get to know how to rebuild it properly if you analyze it properly. Okay, so that was it for today.